Greetings and welcome to In-Depth from DK Rawstar. You cannot survey the Caribbean fashion design landscape and not mention the name of our guest. And she's also in that rarefied air where you just need one name to describe her. Everyone knows who you're talking about. Since 2011 to now, TEDx is on and she is going to be giving a talk this time around. We are going to be speaking with Mailing, and we're very happy to do so. I do we want to thank you so much for making the time, but I also want to know where you are now, looking back. Did you see yourself at this point, or was it something a little different that you envisioned? No, I think I've, I've I, well, I always wanted to have a career that spanned many years and leave Trinidad with some sort of legacy of what I do. So I think I'm quite happy, and actually being a being in conversation at TEDx is one of the things I've hit. I mean, it was daunting when I was first asked to do it, but now I'm happy that I'm doing it because it's another thing that I can add or show, this, show the young people who I mentor. And even before we go to that mentorship, because I may want to go into it a little bit, looking at the fact that there is a legacy, looking at the fact that you do mentor individuals, do you still actively seek inspiration from outside or is that something intrinsic? And if you're getting inspiration from outside, how do you wrap that around your aesthetic? Well, I think being a creative, you're always looking for inspiration. Being an ins a creative, the one word I use when I'm speaking to young people is about being curious. And I'm a very curious person. So a lot of this curiosity of different subjects or different objects, art, flowers, fauna of Trinidad, carnival, lots of this, being curious about certain things or people or artists, fuels my inspiration for a collection or a certain piece that I've, I have to deliver to a client. But I hear you talking about flora, carnival. I didn't hear you talk about architecture. Architecture, of course, I should have said, I suppose, because that is so second nature, living in Woodbrook and living in what I think is a beautiful old Woodbrook home uh, with the with one right next door to me, which is aptly named the Gingerbread House, and the the fretwork throughout the years, probably because I do it all the time, it echoes in my work in the embroideries that I imbue some of my garments with. So architecture plays a very very important part when I'm designing. Also because I'm very minimal, if you know my tagline is less is more. So very straight lines, very minimal. Of course, I do frills and flowers and beading, but that is really the ethos of my, of my work. But how do you start off looking at something that is so tangible and concrete and it can support people living in it for so long and say, okay, well, I'm going to take that ethos, that energy, and have it, put it into a garment that people can wear. Well, if you think about it, if you think of the fretwork, especially some of the fretwork, the, the fretwork in my house is very geometric, straight lines. The fretwork in the house next door to me is very lacy. And I think of this as a trim or as embroidery. And this is how I would introduce that. Or column, the column of a column dress, or sleeves can echo like the volume of something I see in a building. So this is how it works. I mean, being a creative, sometimes it's difficult to really put into words how you come up with it. But of course, it's, you're all, I'm always being inspired. And we're grateful that you're able to pull the fabric back a little bit and give us a peek into your world, the way you look at some of these things. But I, I still want to bear down on the, that architectural grounding. What's the significance of the collection? And we see some of the it's like Murray tunic, Gallus hoodie dress, Aria Peter, Raglan sleeve shirt, Newton shirt, Audrey, Anna Holter, the Cornel. And, and obviously, you've done a lot of research into my last collection, which is called Woodbrook. Uh, and I decided, you know, I'm always looking for. This was a collection I designed for export, and I did it. I showed it in the UK earlier this year, and I decided to call it Woodbrook and call each piece by the name of a street the name of my house, Satchel House. So I found something, uh, the, the, like the new tongue shirt, 
was inspired by a new tongue, like the uniforms that they wear. The collar would echo the new tongue uniform. So that's how I went about it. And I have to say that it's gotten a very good response. And people are sort of almost tickled by, you know, the names and how I had a, a young woman come in and said, I must have the Cornelio shirt because I live on Cornelio Street. <laughs> but and it's, you spoke about doing something generally or doing something, a commission, the piece. How do you navigate that space? Because sometimes individuals, this is my work, this represents me, this is my baby. But the nuance or being able to say, okay, well, this is my work, but it is also built to someone's specifications. And sometimes this task is quite challenging. And many a time, without being rude or without, I would say to a client, she brought me something that didn't really resonate with me or resonate with my work. And I didn't, I don't think at the moment that it is the right piece for me to work on. I'll say, leave it with me. I remember someone coming once and they, when they described what they want and it didn't sit well with me and I didn't think that I could execute it to the best. And I always want to give my clients the best. So the next morning I rang her and I was very polite in saying, I love what you chose, but I don't think I am the designer for you. And this happens, this is really happens because I can, I first meet, if, for instance, if you came to me for the first time, a woman comes to me, we sit and we have a conversation of the piece she wants, if she's a new client. If she's a client that I've been dressing for years, it makes it much easier because I know her style. Is she tailored? Is she very feminine? Does she like frills? Does she like straight line? And we work from there. When a new client or a bride comes into me who have never dressed before, that is when I have to spend more time getting into her head, as it were, to find out how do, how do you see yourself? What do you want? And you must, oh, I always listen to my client because I don't think, gone are the days when designers will say this or that. I think you have, I prefer when people give me a little bit of their own personality that I can inject that into the design that I'm giving them. But is that something that you've had to work on in terms of, and I don't even want to say pushback, but possibly guiding someone? Because you, you may see that that style is a nice style, but the way that it may accentuate you may not be what you're really looking for. Yeah, and that sometimes is a challenge, and sometimes it's something that I enjoy doing because if, if someone trusts me, and I think a creative person works best when the client trusts them. I'm not saying that we dictate or I dictate to them, but I sometimes say, why are you here? Oh, because you're one of Trinidad's best. I like your style. I said, well, trust me. And, and it goes from there. But sometimes it's, sometimes it's a, most of the time it's a joy. And most of the time they say, oh, you're right. <laughs> and then sometimes it's very difficult getting them around to think what they, you know. And one of the things though, in terms of that motivation, that leaving of that legacy, I remember being in a class once and the instructor was saying, I'm going to teach each of you the same thing, but it is my hope that it looks different when each of you articulate it. That relationship that you have with your, your mentees, what, what is that like? Um, first, I have to say that it's something that I've started doing, I would say, actually quite probably 10 years. I've been not really conscious of mentoring, but I have been, and I now know that I am. Uh, and I have a few of the designers or the artists that I can see that are, have listened and they're doing well. Uh, but it's not just about me giving them, it's a symbiotic relationship. So I want them, I listen to them. Sometimes when they sit with me at the end of the conversation, they've worked it out themselves, what they want to, you know, the questions they are asking. Uh, but I also, it's, I want people to know that it's not just me giving them something, I get so much from them as well, especially keeping my brand relevant today. Uh, list, I always want to know what are they reading, what music they're listening to, and this is what will translate into, into, you know, into the mentorship. All right, and with that, we take a short break because I want to get back into some of that, but we will resume the conversation when we return from this break. Stay with us, we'll return with more. Welcome 
welcome back. We are having a conversation, literally sitting at the feet of great ones. We are here with Mailing. And sitting at the feet of great one, I want to pick up where we, where we took that break. And it really feels as though you bear down to the true meaning of education, educare, to illuminate from within. So I'm not going to give you your answers. Let me ask some pointed questions. Because many times people have that seed of the answer within themselves, but you may not trust. Trust is a word that you use. They may not trust themselves and say, okay, well, I have it. When, in fact, they do. Mm -hmm. And getting from them as well, I think, is also what helps to keep ideas fresh and help, help you push yourself and challenge yourself. Yeah. But in terms of pushing yourself and challenge yourself, do you try to push boundaries? Because I'm always flawed when I see that so much can be done in terms of one color scheme and say, okay, well, how can I make this different than how it was before? How can I make someone say that there are so many more possibilities as opposed to just saying, okay, we're going to have it on a border or we're going to have it on a bias or we're going to do it like that. So how do you... How do you how and do you I'm do quite that? impressed that you know these terms, the bias. And no, man, I was, I, I was one of those who... My mom had the... The foot pedal. Yes, yes. So, of course, you know, that was a car. Uh -huh. <laughs> and obviously, you know something about it because not many people speak about cutting fabric on the bias. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I'm always looking, I'm always up for a challenge. And one of the, like, so I'm always looking for new ways to do things. Nothing is new in fashion. Huh? It, it's all, it all comes, the mini skirt has come back around. You know, so many things have come back. But each time it comes is with a new touch, a new twist. And I'm always up for a challenge to kind of stand out and be different with a minimal design, mind you. So it's probably just a trim. Or if you look at my shirt, actually, I have all black buttons and one red one. People know this. They see it and they know, they told me they know it's a mailing shirt. Or the fine embroidery I do at the back of the sleeve. So I'm always looking for something to make my signature even stronger in this I mean, the fashion industry is huge today and nothing is new and a lot of things have been done and you're kind of tired. So I'm always looking for a simple thing that would stand out and, and say, that shirt is me laying. And you say that and it reminds me once somebody asking, I prefer understated yeah. because it can also, to and me, yeah. has a, yes, as opposed to you have this big thing or it's just so blaring. Yeah. But looking and seeing, okay, this is the little nuance that I want to do. What is it that drives you and say, and is it the material that you're working with? Is it the client that you said, some may want it a little more structured, yeah. some may want it a little more flowy. How do you decide this is what I'm going to do, especially if you've gotten that, that tabula rasa, that blank slate to work with because that person trusts you? Uh, it takes a little time. It takes many sketches that are kept. Some of them end up in the bin. You try and you try again. You show a client comes to me and I show her three designs and we go. She may not have uh, like all of them or she likes one and then this is how it goes. Every, every process has its own little nuance, as you say, or own little way of it evolving to something else. Do we have anyone trying to grab that bin from you because they say some of the sketches go into the bin and they say impossible we can tweak that a little <laughs> bit or meaning is sure that's one you wanted to throw away <laughs> yes i know because i can always come back to it and you know i, I it's it's okay <laughs> how easy is it to trust your voice oh that's a very difficult thing it's trusting i think once you're creative you're very you're opening yourself to doubt you spend your life doubting yourself, being very vulnerable, and sometimes it's very uncomfortable, but sometimes that gives you the power to create even better. And do you prefer smaller, I, I don't know if runs is the, good word, is, is the proper word of a piece, so it's for one individual, and, or it's something that can be scaled a little more I, I like both of them. If it's a piece that is very special for a very special occasion, I prefer just being commissioned for that one. But if I do like shirts, which I'm known for, or simple day dresses, I can do small batches because remember, we're living in a time of sustainability. Although I've always produced in a sustainable 
So I say small batches with great artisanal work. And that makes me think of the person saying, tiny do plenty. So you said you're picking up, you're open to challenges, you like challenges, you are going to be speaking at the TED Talks. But how do you feel in the minute and a half that we have? Someone said, mailing makes us all proud because she showcases to the world the Caribbean in a unique, uplifting, and positive way. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel very proud, and it makes me feel that I, I may leave a legacy, that mailing has changed Caribbean fashion in some small way. And that is basically the way that you started saying this is why you got into it. Absolutely. So the fact that you're able to still be on that point of emphasis, I think, is something that's really beautiful. Yes, thank you. That, that, that really is one of my two things that, Carlo Street, where I work, is an open door to all creatives that I've mentored and also that, you know, that I've changed, I've made some sort of dent or some sort of spot on, kept on, on the Caribbean fashion scene, that I've changed fashion for the Caribbean woman in some special way. I know someone, he says that tiny do plenty, and I think you're doing plenty more than plenty. So we want to thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, that's lovely. <laughs> Definitely. And we want to thank you on behalf of the entire TTT News team. I'm DK Ronstar. This has been In Depth with me. Thank you so much for joining us.